things happening in this country. Let me say back namaste again, Joshua. Josh, Lawrence, namaste. namaste. Uncle and auntie, namaste. Let's begin tonight's program with a big smile on my face. I told a gathering of about 75 people from Essequibo, Borbis, Georgetown, and Linden on Saturday that Guyana is on fire. And a few evil people in our country is willing to have Guyana burn to the ground to fatten their pockets. We are witnessing more and more of that daily. The president, the vice president, and the opposition leader of this country has been developing a culture, an attitude, uncle, that soon citizens could be arrested for just mentioning the name Exxon Mobil from our mouths. And if we say anything bad about Exxon, you can end up in prison sooner rather than later. The leaders will compel Guyanese to hang ExxonMobil logo in the churches, the mandirs, and the masjids. And we will have to kneel down in front of the logo before we start our prayers. Me don't put up Exxon logo in this radio room and in the newsroom downstairs. I have to put one in my car to remind me who should come first in my life? <laughs> so I begin tonight's program by saying Namaste to Massa Exxon. Massa Exxon, please grant me permission to pray on this radio station. Dear Exxon, you are first. Our leaders are second and our creator is after y'all. Third. Amen. <laughs> and we begin tonight with our current president. Yes. Former President Ramos Starr said two weeks ago, if it was up to him, Exxon contract would have been changed. Who tell he to say that? President Ali jumped down on the truth. Man, uncle, when I listened to how President Ali reacted to a simple statement like that from his former boss, ex-president, I had to listen two, three, four times to make sure that it was our current president saying what he said. You're going to hear him just now for your own ears. This is the man who promised before he was elected to review and renegotiate that lopsided contract with ExxonMobil. I want you guys to hear him first in his own words before you hear what he said about President Ramotar and all of us who are saying renegotiate the contract. Joshua, please play President Ali. The oil contract. Do you agree with the 55 billion signed away um, global witness report? And will you revisit the oil contract? We have made it very clear, but we can never agree. How can, how can, I don't think any guy needs to agree with this. No guy needs, except the government that is defending it. We, can, we, we have made it very clear that we have to go towards we're looking at these contracts, we're negotiating these contracts, looking at uh, contract management, and all of these things. Everything we have to relook at because we have to ensure that our country does not get uh, the wrong end of the street. So everything is on, re on the table for review as review, it relates to our contracts. Yes, re review and renegotiate. Yes, everything. Review and renegotiate. That was President Ali in 2020. Today is 2023. Three years later, he beating up and beating down his former boss. 
and every Guyanese were calling to have that contract renegotiated. Listen to him as he was addressing a few foreign diplomats and a few Guyanese. Play him, Joshua. So you know, everybody's a specialist now. Whether you're former president, you're president, you're whoever engineer, you're owner of Bihari and uh, the Bihari group. Everybody specialized now. And I'm, you know, I don't spend my time on negative energy, but it's tiring to listen to some of these guys. What? You want us to change the contract? You have an existing contract. You think that is how it happens? That is how the world operates? That you can just walk in one day and decide, I had this contract with you, I'm changing it now. One lawsuit. This is not plating. And some of these guys were policy makers. To believe that you, you know, it's fanciful, it's nice and exciting and very popular to say we can change the contract. That is why we are very careful to say that we have to learn from the mistake and ensure that future contract does not make the same mistake. And that is what we have done. That is what we are doing. How will you build confidence in the system when you have the sophisticated investor looking on from the outside and say, look, these guys, who are these guys? You can't depend on them. You think sophisticated investors look at you, oh, you guys look good, we're coming to invest. They look at your systems. That is why the IMF report spoke so extensively about the reforms and the system. But everybody wants a front page now. Some of them had plenty of years to change it. But they want a front page now. The easiest thing to get a front page is to say, oh, I support changing the contract. For God, heaven's sake, I wish if it was a better contract. All of us wish that. We have been given a bad hand. We have to correct it now. We have to ensure that future hands are not as that bad. And we're in a better position to call the shots. You got to be realistic sometimes. Not opportunistic. Thank you, Joshua. Auntie and uncle, everybody specialized now. He didn't make a specialized promise. When he say he's going to renegotiate and review the contract. He did. Making all Guyana. <laughs> oh. Make one use the word. Oh, he make, he make, we can't use the word. He can't repeat the word. What he had said. Uncle and auntie. This president is only making all of us a set of donkeys. When he tell this nation, he going to review and renegotiate the contract. Uncle and auntie, it's even written in his party manifesto. And you hear him today? Everybody specialized now. You know, when this man talk about one lawsuit, Uncle and Auntie is doing two things there. He's making himself a fool, and on the other hand, he's putting up a fight with that foolishness that he's trying to push down with truth. Could you believe, Lawrence? A contract that has a very clear provision in which our government and opposition can just ask 
can just ask brother Exxon we want to have a discussion to change this contract that's all we have to do ask but instead of doing that this president talking about lawsuit one lawsuit <laughs> Lawrence Exxon Mobil can't file no lawsuit against Guyana we haven't done anything to Exxon Mobil all we doing is trying to do what the contract specify uncle if one of the partner says man I am happy with this contract I want we sit down and talk what lawsuit got to do with this Lawrence hmm? How President Ali get there? Man, let me play back this piece for y'all again, man. Joshua, just play it back. You know, everybody is a specialist now. Whether you're a former president, you're a president, you're whoever engineer, you're owner of Bihari and uh, the Bihari group. Everybody specialized now. And I'm, you know, I don't spend my time on negative energy, but it's tiring to listen to some of these guys. What? You want us to change the contract? You have an existing contract. You think that is how it happens? That is how the world operates? That you can just walk in one day and decide, I had this contract with you, I'm changing it now. One lawsuit. This is to believe that you, you know, it's fanciful, it's nice and exciting and very popular to say we can change the contract. That is why we are very careful to say that we have to learn from the mistake and ensure that future contract does not make the same mistake. And that is what we have done. That is what we are doing. You know, Uncle and Auntie, I tell you, I listened to that thing a couple of times and the more I listen to it, like I feel like uh, that I want to throw up Everybody specialized now. <laughs> Lawrence, every oil export in the world, every leader in the world, anybody who can read and write know that this contract Diana signed on to has to change. And hear how our president, listen what that man is telling us. Everybody specialized now to change a contract. I am so happy that you people can hear this man for yourselves. And got the few Guyanese along with the diplomats who reaping and raping the country. Clapping away and smiling away at him. What he say, uncle? I don't spend time on negative energy, but it's tiring to listen to some of these guys. You see why I'm telling you that soon <laughs> you all going to call Exxon Mobil name in this country, auntie. Right now, he tired. Soon. Soon he can pass a lot to say. You can't say anything about Exxon Mobil. You got an existing contract. You think this is how the world operates? That you can walk in one day and change it? Yes, Mr. Ali. Yes, President Ali. Yes, Dr. Ali. You can walk in any time and say, Exxon Mobil, we want you to come back to the drawing board, to the table to discuss changing this contract. This contract spells disaster for this country.
Uncle and auntie, he himself said, Guyana holding the wrong end of the stick. It looks like he holding something else that we don't know about with ExxonMobil. Will you sell Lawrence? One lawsuit. You know what he's doing, dear Lawrence? Spreading fear in our minds and planting doubts in the minds of the Guyanese people about a very simple, simple contract to be changed. This tactic and trick, President Ali, that you, you and Jack Dale coming up with, is not going to work on the Guyanese people, brother. We have long passed that stage. Uncle and auntie, are you notice how the people, are you putting power trying to make your dunces and idiots? He said some of these guys were policy makers and had many years to change it. I don't know where he find that from. Or who are the policy makers he talking about? Let me remind all of you. I don't know if he talking about Ramotar and Trotman. Both of them came out and said this contract should be changed. Trotman who signed it went further to say he's willing to help change it. And if he's talking about Ramatar, Ramatar was never anywhere close to the Exxon contract. He was president before Trotman signed the contract. So Ramatar had nothing to do with this thing. Then President Ali went on to say, that is why we are very careful to say that we have to learn from the mistakes and ensure that future contract does not make the same mistakes. And that is what we have done. That is what we are doing. Hmm. And it was a big round of applause again from the people who get in fat, fat, fat US dollars from the contract. Are you hear the spin he put on this thing? It's the same spin Barajag they were telling this nation over and over and over. President Ali pick up the same belna or rolling pin from Barajag Dale. Every time Jagde opened him out, the new contract, the new PSA will be different. We will not make the same mistakes made in ExxonMobil contract. Now President Ali pick up that same bell. Now. We will correct the mistakes made with Exxon on future contracts. This is where both of them tricking this country. Making you believe they are correcting mistakes with future contracts. What future contracts they're talking about, Lawrence? Contracts for 14 Isle Blacks that have nothing inside. That is the mistakes they are correct. When the golden goose, the Exxon block, on. from Suriname to the Venezuela border with 99% of Guyana's oil inside, they're not touching it or correcting anything with that. But you listen to their words and how they come over, how they're trying to can y'all. Oh, we will correct the mistakes in the future contracts. Uncle and auntie, are you please pay attention to what these people are doing to our livelihood and our future, please. I beg you. 
Jack Day and President Ali are not touching anything or correcting anything that Exxon has its hands on. Absolutely nothing. It's a free reign. It's a free ride Exxon have with 99% of Guyana's oil going away free to Exxon Mobil. And every word that comes out their mouths is to distract and confuse your minds from that Exxon Stabrook feel and that contract uncle. Joshua, play back the piece, let him hear it again, brother. You know, everybody is a specialist now. Whether you're a former president, you're a president, you're whoever engineer, you're owner of Bihari and uh, the Bihari group. Everybody specialized now. And I'm, you know, I don't spend my time on negative energy, but it's tiring to listen to some of these guys. What? You want us to change the contract? You have an existing contract. You think that is how it happens? That is how the world operates? That you can just walk in one day and decide, I had this contract with you, I'm changing it now. One lawsuit. This is to believe that you, you know, it's fanciful, it's nice and exciting and very popular to say we can change the contract. That is why we are very careful to say that we have to learn from the mistake and ensure that future contract does not make the same mistake. And that is what we have done. That is what we are doing. You know, Lawrence? Uncle and auntie, he went out full of rage the very afternoon when Kaicho News put out that statement Ramutar made on Globespan, a radio station in New York. Especially to attack the man and attack every Guyanese who talk about change, about renegotiation of the contract, or say anything about the Exxon contract. None of we must say anything. We must zip our mouth. We must take quiet. Let's wait and see if we can pass a law that we must not say anything. And the opposition might very well support that law too. Because they too are completely dumb, numb and silent where negotiation is concerned. You guys remember Aubrey Norton sent out a letter 5 o'clock in the morning refuting the Kaicho News story that he never used the word renegotiation? That gives you an idea of who you all elect to office to manage your future and how they have become slaves to Massa Exxon Mobil and a contract. They must worship the contract. And it looks like they want all of us to worship it too. Well, Glenn Laldon start. Remember, I start with please, Master Exxon. Joshua, find out for me if they put Master Exxon logo on my vehicle. Make sure they do it before I go home tonight. Lawrence, we are not in trouble in this country, you know. We are not in danger. We are in a disaster with one foot in the grave with leaders like these. The fire is raging in this land and it can only be put out one way, uncle. But instead of them throwing water to put it out, the leaders throwing more gasoline to inflame it. More and more. And watching. Watching us in our faces. And telling us. Hmm. We don't know what we are talking about. We are fools. That's what he's actually telling us there. Uncle. I don't know how much more 
is in me to expose daily and help save this country. And you people not helping me. Your own future, the future of your unborn children and grandchildren are at risk. And like it mean nothing to y'all. Your opposition is silent. Your government attacking the former president and the man who signed the contract. Along with every Guyanese who calling for a change in that contract. <laughs> of course, with the exception of Glenn Lal. They don't call my name. I wonder why. Lawrence Mimo too big? Huh? Or they got a plans for me. I hear they're cooking up something in the grapevine. Let's see if they're more powerful than my creator. Impossible. Uncle, the more I listen to this young president, it sicks my stomach. It makes me shake to know that he is so shallow and mischievous. What he does and what he says, uncle, instead of leading this nation in the right direction, he's trying to mislead all of us. Instead of in informing us, he's misinforming us with swings and spins on everything that comes out his mouth. Let's listen to him again. Joshua, play him again. How will you build confidence in the system when you have the sophisticated investor looking on from the outside and say, look, these guys, who are these guys? You can't depend on them. You think sophisticated investors look at you, oh, you guys look good, we're coming to invest. They look at your systems. That is why the IMF report spoke. Everybody wants a front page now. Some of them had plenty of years to change it. But they want a front page now. The easiest thing to get a front page is to say, oh, I support changing the contract. Hmm. Hmm. How will you build confidence in the system when you have sophisticated investor looking on from the outside? Sophisticated gangsters, he means, uncle. All of them. See how sophisticated Exxon is. To come give me 2% royalty. And them looking out. Them looking in from the outside. With 2%, brother. How you like that? They, these, these are sophisticated investors. A government not capping the interest rate. A government not protecting its people from an oil spill. A government not collecting taxes. Government not grabbing. They clean up hundreds of millions. Government not checking the people expenses or their project costs. That's the sophisticated investor. This sophisticated leader is talking about. When a government, when a government can manage their resources in this fashion, uncle, <laughs> man, Joshua, Every sophisticated investor knows they have a, the kind of leaders they need to come and rape and rob the country blind. Of course, they can depend on that. Not true, brother? You notice, Lawrence? The, our president talking about building confidence with foreign investors. 
Tell me one statement, one word this young president have said in three years that says he's boosting or building the confidence of the Guyanese people. You ever hear anything? Where do we stand as the owners of all these resources? What is there for us? This leader, this leader, now got two meter the oil pump. Whose confidence this man boasting about dear man? This man not capping the interest rate. Whose confidence this man building there? This man don't want Guyanese to see the billions in bills and expenses we are paying. Is who confidence this man building there? The Guyanese people? I feel very sorry for this president, Uncle and Auntie. And I feel even more sorry for you, the Guyanese people. But this is who you elect. This is who y'all select. Sophisticated investors. <laughs> they are called gangsters in America and Europe. Them chapters are called sophisticated investors. <laughs> my gosh, Joshua. It pains my soul every time I listen to the leaders of this country. Especially Barajag Deo and Aubrey Norton. And now it looks like if the president jump in the same minibus with them. Nice, nice, nice. Lies, lies, lies. And it's getting worse by the day, Lawrence. CN Sharma had a program called Justice for All. And he used to say, is a shad, shad, shad situation we have. I don't know. Clearly, we are living in a sick, sick, sick season. You know, Lawrence, when I bring Norton up my mouth, at least you see he just put a foot in his mouth. When Jack Day opened his mouth, you recognize a tricky and a tranny character in action. But when President Ali opens his mouth, you realize the tragedy we're living with and what lies ahead, brother. They're looking at our system. President Ali said they're looking at our system. What systems we have, uncle? We don't have any system in this country to check nothing, to monitor nothing. And you see what's going on in the interior with our gold? Manganese, our timber. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you have anything to see what's going on with the oil at every level, uncle? Or with that contract? Look at the Guyana police force system. Look at the hospital system. The water system. The GPL system. What kind of system we president talking about? You don't know how much oil they're pumping. You don't know how much gas they're flaring. How much poison they're dumping in that from that produced water into the Atlantic Ocean. And this man talking about system. Praising IMF for talking about reform. <laughs> he suddenly find a friend in the IMF who praising Guyana for its reform. Like he forget that same IMF Beg Guyana to cap the interest rates. If not, the oil company is going to take us for a ride. They would rob us. 
Oh, he didn't like that one. He didn't like to hear that one. What can earn Guyana billions of US? Man, he cuss out the same IMF. I remember when he asked my reporter, did IMF mention Guyana name? I see how this man talking out his head and losing his mind. You know, uncle, they have a saying, when you talk one lie, you got to cover it up with more lies. When you start out with one trick, the trick becomes your way of life. This is what Guyana has become. The leaders of this land can't walk straight, see straight, or even talk straight anymore. This is what they have done to themselves, and they are trying to do, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> the same to all of us. Carry us down that same road. You know, Lawrence, I don't mind going down that road. I don't even mind if all Guyana go down that road. But, hmm, but, Lawrence, all of us must get what they, the leaders, are getting. Not true, man? I don't mind lie like them, play games and tricks like them. None of us. But we must get the same thing what them getting for themselves, the leaders. I can start calling Exxon name every time I sneeze. I will pray for them even when I go to do, go to do wrong things. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Let me replay the end of that views out for you all here. Play it. For God heaven's sake, I wish if it was a better contract. All of us wish that. We have been given a bad hand. We have to correct it now. We have to ensure that future hands are not as that bad. And we're in a better position to call the shots. You got to be realistic sometimes, not opportunistic. Fancy language and fancy words. We are in a better position to call the shots. Is when he calling the shots and what shots he firing, uncle? The only bullseye is the stabbrook oil field. Let me repeat. From the Suriname border to the Venezuela border. How are you missing that, uncle? But no shot and firing there. <laughs> the, shot, the shot is being fired into the tiny oil blocks. In hope that they hit something. In which Guyana will get something. A little 10% tax. A little 10% royalty. And a 200,000 signing bonus. That is where President Ali firing shots. And no shots fired at Exxon to change anything there. Not even the little audit Guyana do. In which we found out Exxon robbed we more than $214 million. Nothing is being changed. Instead, the man attacking... R Raphael Trotman and Donald Ramatar. Just play it back. Then let him hear the piece, man. For God heaven's sake, I wish if it was a better contract. All of us wish that. We have been given a bad hand. We have to correct it now. We have to ensure that future hands are not as that bad. And we're in a better position to call the shots. You got to be realistic sometimes. 
not opportunistic. For God heaven's sake, I wish it was a better contract. All of us wish that. We have been given a bad hand. We have to correct it now. We have to ensure that future hands are not a, that bad. And we are in a better position to call the shots. <laughs> bad hand. If you ask me, uncle, we didn't even get a hand with Exxon Mobil, much less a bad hand. We didn't even got a foot in the door with the way how this president and the other leaders behaving. I just see the kind of trouble, the kind of trouble you and your future generation is in with these people. The few Guyanese who raise their hands and ask for change. They're ready to jump like a starving stray dog ready to eat them out. Telling people about how we must be realistic, not opportunistic. Uncle and auntie. All them sophisticated investors he talking about live for one thing and one thing only. Opportunities, opportunities and opportunities. This is how Exxon and all of them become so filthy rich on earth. Every opportunity them grab at. Every dollar them make sure them they in front of you. Instead, we president learn from that same word opportunistic and run Guyana with an opportunistic mentality. He is on the back burner telling us we have to be realistic. Losing our wealth daily in the U.S. billions. And we must be realistic rather than being opportunistic. Uncle, auntie, in this life, you have to jump on every opportunity in your eyesight. There is no wait. The minute you wink, it gone from you. The leaders of this land winking with the investors and leaving all of us naked. President Ali accept we get a bad hand. And now he's making the bad hand into a worse hand. A worse hand than any human being can think of. Look what Kaicho News reported yesterday, uncle. You guys got to listen to this carefully. Yesterday we reported how Suriname managing their oil wealth. Before I get to that story, let me tell you what Suriname is set to get. Compare to what Guyana is getting. Suriname oil contract set to give them six and a quarter percent royalty. Guyana getting two percent. And Ali not changing that. Suriname set to collect 36 percent taxes on every barrel of oil. Guyana getting zero. And Dr. Ali numb on that. Suriname has a 20% business share if it wants on these oil projects. Guyana business share is Exxon robbing you and me. Suriname set to get profit and monitors everything. 
Guyana getting profits and monitors nothing. Suriname total take home on each barrel is 62 and a quarter percent. Guyana is 14 and a half percent. Are you ready for the story about Suriname now? Hold on a little more. Let me add some background. The president of Suriname and several of his ministers came here in August of 2021 to sit with our president, vice president, and our oil team to work, to work out how they will manage this oil sector as two neighbors. How we could hold one head as brothers or ancestors. Barat Jagdeo picked up his oil team and went to Texas to meet with Exxon Mobil. The whole Suriname entourage with the president came to Guyana and had to and had nobody, brother, had nobody to talk with but the president of Guyana. How you like that one? That was when Barra Jagdale told us from Texas that we will have to live, live with what we get in for quite, quite, quite a while into the future. Y'all remember that tape? I don't have to play it back. Now let's go to this yesterday's story in the Kaicho News. Listen to this, Lawrence. Suriname ring fence their first oil project to avoid the mistakes Guyana made with ExxonMobil. That is one of the many things I was praying for, Lawrence. For Suriname to show you how these leaders I you have deliberately selling out this country. You see, Suriname gets six and a quarter percent royalty, 36 percent taxes, 20 percent business interests in their contract. And the very first thing, the very first project them issue to the oil company. The first thing them tell that company, them want a fence to separate every other project. <laughs> One of the most important things in any business is that fence. Without that fence, nothing will come in your pocket, uncle. Nothing will come in your safe if you have one home. And every single business person or leader on earth knows that. Jagdale knows the importance of this fence. He knows it just as I do. And abuse down the PNC for not putting the fence on the first two leasers. I want to listen to him for the hundred times. Listen to the last word, ring fencing plate, let them hear. Take off, they sold us out to the foreigners. The oil companies, every time there is a find out there, our people should, should be sad because nothing comes our way. We are going to renegotiate those contracts because that's not what we had in mind. When we were in the early days, we were coaxing the people to go along. They, they came into office, three billion barrels of proven reserves, mm -hmm. and then gave up um, a zero royalty, no taxes, no ring fencing. They gave up zero royalty, no taxes, no ring fencing. That was when he was in the opposition, uncle. This fence has nothing to do with the contract on Clanati. Are you getting the one clear? This fence has nothing to do with the contract. This fence is like I said many, many times. 
is allowing Exxon Mobil and the rest of the oil companies to bleed, to thief, to rip off Guyana billions of US dollars. That same man, that same man you heard there just now, did not put in that fence against the three projects he issued after cursing down the PNC. He mean good for Guyana? Eh? He means well for this country, our livelihood and our future. I want to explain again I have to hit this thing in your head again. The importance of that fence, that ring fence. You and your neighbor are mine chicken. And your neighbor not buying chicken feed. Every morning you dump a bag of feed in your yard for you chickens. All your neighbor chicken come over. <laughs> come over and fill them belly. And go back home with your chicken feed. Cocking up them foot. <laughs> High and dry. To God Almighty. Your, your children complaining. Your wife complaining. Your other neighbors complaining. By put a fence. Your neighbor chicken eating at your yard. And you're not putting a fence. Eh? You heard what Jack Dave said just now. Zero royalty, no taxes, no ring fencing. Why are you not putting a fence? You got a special relationship with somebody at a next door neighbor? Huh? How can you have all your neighbor chickens and ducks? Coming over in your yard eating your feed. Day after day, week after week, months after months. Year after year and you not putting a fence. That neighbor getting richer and richer and richer. And your pockets getting emptier. That is what Jack Dale after cursing down the PNC for not putting that fence on Lisa 1 and 2. Went in there and gave three other Lisa and didn't put that fence. So Guyana now got five yards. Five yards where eggs and chicken eating belly full whole day without the fence. Exxon walking home with billions upon billions of U.S. While Guyana sucking up the crumbs that left without a fence. Uncle and auntie, Suriname before granting the license for their first oil project. Tell the oil company clearly, put that fence. You people are not going to do us. What Exxon did to Guyana. Are you see leader there? Hmm? Are you see leader who cares for his people? Leader who looking out for the people of Suriname rather than the oil company? You see why I'm so sick? Sick. Sick of these people. These foul suckers know exactly every corner that Exxon Mobil raping and reaping this land and will not plug any hole or do anything to safeguard and protect our future with our wealth from Exxon Mobil. Honestly, Lawrence, I can't wait. Others be praying for when Exxon Mobil will announce that first project cost to compare it with them 10 and 13 billion US 
project cars Jack Dale accepted from Exxon Mobil without any proper scrutiny or questions. Then I will understand the monsters, the evils, the devils for leaders that you have in this country. How can your leaders knowingly know that they have to put a fence to save this country billions of US dollars? That Exxon is ripping us apart. And can be so rude and downright disrespectful to a nation telling us bluntly no. I asked Barra Jardel. I pleaded with him at his press conference. Sir, you're going to grant the fifth oil project. Are you going to ring fence? Are you going to get full liability coverage? Or taxes from that fifth project? You guys want to hear what a man tell me at that press conference? Joshua played for them. Specific, sir. I'm talking about fencing for liability coverage and corporation. You know what you're asking me? Well, um, I go into a place, I order a plucked chicken, and the person says, I, and then I ask the man, are you going to pull out the feather by the tail no. and, the, and, the, and, and also the other things? The plucked chicken is that we made it clear publicly that projects under the Starbrook block that they will enjoy the same terms as were there in the 2016 agreement. That's it. The fifth project is done in a, in, under the Starbrook block. That is the block chicken. No, sir. Yes, that's a block chicken. You're going to ask me. I am you, talking, right. I'm talking you're, you're going to approve Yes. Under the Starbrook block, in the Starbrook block, in the Starbrook block, that's a fifth project. Okay. In the Starbrook block. So that's you asking me about the feather so now, the by the tail and the feather by the foot. Is that the answer? Right, yes. That's the answer. I told you, you may not agree with it. You don't agree with it. Not that you may not, you don't agree with it. Okay. But you have the answer there. You heard him? Man, he want to fight me for asking him if you go to ring fence the fifth project in which this country is losing billions of US dollars. You heard him. You know what you're asking me? I go to a place and order pluck chicken. And then I ask the man, are you going to pull out the feather by the tail and also the other things? You heard him, Uncle. I have made it clear. Projects under the Starbuck block will remain the same. That is the plot chicken. The Starbuck block. Now you're going to ask me about the feather from the tail and the feather from the foot. Then turn and tell me I would not agree with it. He know fully well. I will never agree with it. Mr. Jagdeo, Brother Jagdeo, let me say it loud and clear. No Guyanese will agree with it. Not even your own self. You yourself cost the PNC about it. What has changed your mind today? What are you getting personally that you're doing this? To all of us in this country. <laughs> you know, I really feel sad for this country. I really, really feel sad for this country. I feel like jump out on, on the road. And stand up in front of the road. And don't eat or drink anything until this thing is changed. That's how mad and crazy I am. When I listen to these people and watch what they're doing to this country and every guy in his silent.
And everyone is silent. Silent! Look what this man doing. Joshua, look what this man doing to your future. Look what this man is doing to our unborn children. And now he's going to give the sixth project. Yes. Yes, is the guy and he's doing it to the self. Nobody doing anything, brother. The sixth project. He go in and give the sixth project this year and without that fence again. Without a single cent of taxes. No increase of royalties. Apart from that, he's not taking back that 120 oil blocks this month then, that can lift this country out of poverty. And all of you sit down on your mouth, your ears. I am going out on the 27th day. This month, I am going to protest in front of his office, at the office of the president on the 27th, for him to take back the 120 oil blocks, and for him to ring fence that project with more royalties and taxes. Please, I want all Guyana to join me. Join me at OP. On that day. I will come off this program completely. I will come off this program completely. I will let Jack Dale Norton. President Ali. And Exxon Mobile give away what they all rightfully deserve. I am done. I am sick and tired of you clumsy people. October 27 is a Friday. 9 a.m. I'm going there. I want to see how much you're going to turn out. You know, look, I only talk about the manganese company Friday night. And those workers shut down the manganese company the next day. What happened to you, man? Hmm? If you don't have money to come out, borrow. I will go in my pocket and give you back. So don't make excuse. Whether you're coming from Linden or Squibble Barbies, don't make no excuse. Let's show both President Ali and Barra Jagdale, including Norton. That they have to take back the oil blocks and change the way they're managing our oil sector. These people can be so barefaced, telling you the right things when you want to, when when you want, when they want a vote. And as soon as I hand them, they go in there making deals for themselves, their families. And the future generations to come. Leaving you. Me and you. With one foot. In the grave. How long more are you going to take this thing man? Joshua you got nothing else more to say tonight. Let's take a few phone calls.